Hi guys, Minnie Flom here, and today I'm here in the studio working on a bunch of stuff. And now I am going to give you a little peek of something I hope you're going to see on a future project. So this guy, this is a fox. You saw a similar fox in the video that I did back in December 2015. Um, I made little tiny paper clips. Well, now I've got this fox, I'm blowing him up, but I've still got some work to do. I'm still working out for myself because this is something new to me, how to take shapes and work with either pre-existing designs or creating my own designs to create my own cut files in the scan and cut. Specifically, I wanna layer up both out of paper and fabrics and felts and things, animals. So, what I've got here, this is a bird that is a pre-existing design within my scan and cut. I just cut it out of white cardstock scrap, and I don't like that it has an eyeball on it. Now, there are ways, of course, to alter digital files with the computer. I'm not very good at that, though. So, instead of fighting my computer, what I wanted to do was to take a look at this and see if I can alter it myself. So, the first thing I'm going to do is, with this pen... I'm just going to kind of sketch what I'm hoping to do with this guy. And I want to make it a little flatter here. So I'm using it as a sort of a template, okay? And then looking at that, I can see that I want this to be a little longer. So I'm going to need to make a few adjustments. And remember, proportion is important, the actual size less important. And the size is less important because we can always resize on the scan and cut itself. So what I'm going to do here is to just adjust where I want my lines. And if I want to adjust other things, get those adjusted in until I'm satisfied. Once I am satisfied, I'm going to take a thicker pen and I'm gonna use this to outline my shape. Now, slight problem, but don't worry, we'll fix it. The slight problem being, the scan and cut is gonna see all of the lines that I'm making. Oops, and I made a mistake too. That's okay though, because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a couple of run-throughs with this until I get it just right. And when I do get it just right, because this is such a heavy, heavy line. I'm just going to use either a light box or just a thin paper on top to outline and trace my final design. What I love about the scan and cut. Now here you can see there's a couple of light lines in there. I don't think this is going to be a problem. So what I have done, and this is something I love about the scan and cut. I have created a couple ideas for my wing. This is going to be like a very funky little birdie, I think. So I sized these to work within our bird friend here. And this is my original, you can see I was going bigger and then I decided to go smaller. Um, I think I'm gonna like how this works out. And this is, there's so many things to love about the scan cup. Here's one of mine, and this is really one of my personal favorites here. I'm just gonna get some scissors here and cut this out because I don't need to scan the whole paper. And uh, believe it or not, what I will do is with all the paper that I cut around this, um, this is actually, this is a very, very thin paper, so I will use this for test cuts in future, but I've got my birdie cut out of there. So all of these guys will go on my, they can go on a regular mat or a scanning mat either way, and we're going to scan these into the scan and cut. So here on my scan and cut, I just scanned in and I did scan to cut data, and you can see I've got different options. By picking the outline, it's just showing the outline of the pieces that I've got here. And I definitely want to save them all together. Although, now that I'm looking at this, I'm going to scan this in. Actually, no. I could scan this in differently if I wanted the pieces to be oriented differently. But I'm going to be okay with that. And once we've saved it, I like to save things to the machine. I'm going to go in here to the machine. I know it was my last cut. So here's why I'm not going to worry about the positioning. I can move independently. I can move these files around. So if I want the wings to be different position, that's easy enough to do. And the other thing I can do here with my little wing bits and all my bits, I can go in here. If I push this button right here, 
and select everybody. And if I unify this, what that's going to do is now when I go to resize all the pieces, you can see everybody moves together. So if I want to make my bird bigger, which I do, everybody's going to move together. And everybody's going to get bigger together or smaller together. I really am going to make a great big old bird here. So all of my pieces will cut out together. Now my next step, I'm going to pick out a fabric and put it on, on the mat here. I prefer to use some kind of backing on most of my fabric. It depends on the fabric. But if it's a fabric that I'll just show you, for example, you know, if I'm going to use this fabric that I have right here. It's a quilting fabric and it's very thin and very flexible and like the fibers really want to move even if you try to cut it. So if I have something like this, I'll put some kind of stiffener or um, an iron on something. I'll do something to it to stiffen it up because I find that it just cuts better. And honestly, I am all about, if I'm gonna make these projects, I certainly want to make it easier on myself. So once I've done that, I can just say okay and cut out my bird. Now I am still sorting out and learning all about making my own little, maybe not stuffed animals, but I mean there are animals and I do intend to stuff them. So as I work all this out guys, I will be making more videos as I hopefully get better at it. So what I have here is some very messy, intentional messy stitching. And I've stitched all these pieces of both felt and fabric down. These are the original pieces, a couple of pieces of fabric, they're original designs that I made with the bird. But I only stitched them down part way. And I did this because, and I am going to reinforce this, but I did this because I want the wing to be able to pop up a bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to do a combination of files like this that have the scan and cut cut and sometimes, you know, it is just faster. It depends on what we're doing. You know, when we're working on this, I could not have made this without the scan and cut so easily, so quickly. I'm gonna need the scan and cut to cut me out of felt a second bird. That'll be the backing. I've decided this green felt would be the backing, but I'll do a combination of scissor cuts and scan and cut cuts here just to make a few more, say a few more feathers, tail feathers, um, and a few more layered accents because I really want this bird to have kind of a fun, funky feel. And I'm also going to need to pick out a button for the eyeball here. I'll put a little button on here and I'm going to pick all of these pieces out before I stitch everything together. This is a new process to me, so I'm having a lot of fun with it. You can see I added some more stitching. I really want to get into contrast stitching and intentionally funky mixed media looking project creatures. This particular one, I'm going to do a couple things here. Uh, first of all, I did not sew this portion here because I'm going to take not a lot. I'm going to make this a hanging bird. I decided this was going to be a, a hanging, think like an ornament type bird. So. I am not going to put a ton, but I will get some stuffing going here and just gently fill out this bird. I think it's going to look so fantastic. Look at that tail. Ah, I love how the tail turned out. And on the tail, I did a couple funky things. So first of all, I stitched straight across on the tail because that seals up the front from the back so that the stuffing can't come out the tail. And then I only stitch this down in place just to show me where it will go. I'm going to go and stitch again now that I've got it stuffed and I see how everything is coming along. I'm going to go stitch that again. And I made the decision to make the stitching visible for two reasons. Number one, again, I'm going for this funky contrast look that I'm just really digging. And I'm really loving the way that my scanning cut, you know, I love working with Brother and creating these videos for you guys, but mostly I love how the scan and cut, more than anything, how it's helping me create these projects that I may not have otherwise been able to create. Now I can see right away here at the opening, what I'm gonna need to do is I'm gonna need to stitch this a bit and then put a little, maybe put a little more fill in and then finish stitching. So by the way I did this, for me, a total novice, at everything sewing and fabric 
this means that I don't have to worry about it. If it's a little imperfect or, you know, the fact that my stitching is going to be visible on this part, it's okay because that's the style of the project. And then I've got only two things left to do. I'm going to use some fabric glue and glue down a button. I'm just kind of, kind of looking through my buttons here and searching for the perfect perfect button, the perfect shade, the perfect size. I actually think a green button is going to end up being what I go with. But anyhow, I got to find a button for the eyeball, use some fabric glue to glue that on, and then find a little, little loop of ribbon of some sort. And with a little, I was looking at this lace, but I, I don't know if I want lace for this. Um, I'm just going to put a loop of ribbon. And honestly, if I had thought of this before, I would have stitched this into there but because I didn't it's not a big deal I'm just going to stitch a little loop of ribbon I think on probably on the back so I need to make it a little longer I'm gonna stitch this down maybe right alongside with the wing and I think I'll put a little button along there as well just to kind of decorate it and then that way we can hang hang my birdie ornament up and decorate for spring I know it's still winter but decorate decorate and think of warming weather and spring days and I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial like I said I'm brand new at these kind of projects so I'm really excited to play with my scan and cut and play with my supplies see what I come up with and I'll be sharing them here with you on YouTube if you have any questions feel free to leave me a comment any requests any tips if you have tips please feel free to give them to me because I am all about learning and getting better at this stuff because I got to tell you it's a lot of fun and it's nice to have tools that help you get creative and see your visions through. I'll see you guys next time.